Lux presents Hollywood. The Lux Radio Theater brings you Robert Taylor and Barbara Stanwyck in Penny Serenade with Eula Bondi and Edgar Buchanan. Ladies and gentlemen, your producer, Mr. Cecil B. DeMille. Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. One of the leading characters in tonight's play won't say much, although I believe that's quite customary with ladies of her age. She's the baby that Robert Taylor and Barbara Stanwyck adopt in Penny's Serenade. But even in her almost silent state, she helps to make it one of those rare stories that strike a common chord with all audiences. When the right director finds such a story, Hollywood knows it can look forward to an extraordinary picture. And that's what happened when George Stevens brought Penny Serenade to the screen for Columbia Studios. Penny Serenade is a love story, but not a simple boy-meets-girl love story. It's a drama of the deepest human emotions. The story of a, of a boy and a girl whose faith and hope are suddenly dashed by disaster, but who have the courage to reach out again for happiness. The kind of story that demands the talents of stars like the two we have tonight. So it's not easy to catch those two between pictures at the same time. But we saw our chance and took it when Bob finished her cardboard lover at Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer. Beulah Bondi and Edgar Buchanan from the screencast of Penny Serenade make tonight's prospect perfect. I see by the papers and here on the air that certain rules are being laid down about the style of women's clothes, object to help the war economy by saving fabrics. Naturally, every patriotic woman will do her part in a drive like that. And so will Lux Flakes. Like most mere males, I've never professed to understand some of the styles that sweep the country. And if I can't admire, I tactfully hold my peace, or should. But when the style of the moment is conservation, even a thoroughly unstyle conscious man can understand it. And when you're conserving something that's washable, if Lux Flakes hadn't arrived like the Marines and gotten the situ well, situation well in hand, they should. I can't tell you how many flakes you get for a penny, but they play a very pretty penny serenade. And now here's the play, Penny Serenade, starring Robert Taylor as Roger and Barbara Stanwyck as Julie, with Beulah Bondi as Miss Oliver and Edgar Buchanan as Applejack. The scene is quite simple. An automobile parked on the main street of a small town. Two people, a man and a woman, sitting quietly in the front seat. The passerby would see nothing wrong here. But in this everyday setting, tragedy is taking place. And the lives of two people are changing course. The man is silent, brooding. With a sudden movement, he opens the car door and gets out. What's the matter, Roger? Take the car on home. What about you? I'm not coming home. I don't ever want to see anything or anyone that reminds me. All right. Goodbye. Oh, Roger. Yeah? When you do come home, I may not be there. Where are you going? I'm not sure. I don't know. Well, I guess Applejack's there. He'll help you if you want anything. Yes. Goodbye, Roger. Bye, Julie. Call the station, Applejack, make sure they've got my reservation. Then I'd like you to drive me to the train, please. Miss Julie, you better think this over. I have been thinking it over, Applejack. I've been thinking it over for days. I'm leaving. You and Roger have been married a long time. But we don't need each other anymore. When that happens to two people, there's nothing left. Miss Julie, I, I guess I've known you two people better than anyone in my whole life. What with working with the boss on the paper here and seeing everything that's happened, well, well somehow it just doesn't seem right. Applejack, you... please. I'm leaving. Yes, Miss Julie. Oh, I meant to ask you. I found these records. Uh, you want to take them along with you? Which records? Those phonograph records you've been collecting all these years. You made them up into an album, remember? 
story of a happy marriage. A happy marriage? Yeah, well, while you was out before, I played a couple of nice tunes. Remember this one, Miss Julie? Let me see. Yes, I, I remember when we bought this record. I remember the first time I ever heard it, the day I met Roger. It was in the phonograph store I worked in 12 years ago. We were playing this tune on the loudspeaker, and Roger was standing out on the sidewalk. I was fixing some records in the window, and I looked up and saw him. He was smiling at me. <laughs> I thought he was pretty fresh. And the next thing I knew, he was inside the store. Hello? Yes? Is there anything I can do for you? Hmm? Oh, oh yes, uh... That's a new tune, isn't it? Yes, we just got it in today. It'd be nice to dance to, wouldn't it? Yes, it would be. <laughs> would you like to buy it? Uh, well, uh, what's on the other side? Another new one. Oh, well, could I hear it? Certainly, right over there, booth three. No, I mean, would you play it for me? If you want. Oh, uh, thanks. Oh, and wait, as long as we're listening, we might as well hear some of these others, too. I'll just take this stack here. There we are. Now, just a minute, please. Oh, it's, it's all right. I can carry them. Get along fine. <laughs> Sure, you want all these? Oh, yes, sure. 27 records at 50 cents. That'll be, uh, um, 13.50, please. 13.50, yeah. Well, here you are. Thank you. Hey, it's pretty late, isn't it? Yes, we're closing up. Oh, I'm sorry. Say, so you must be tired. Maybe I could take you home. I'll get a cab. A cab? You certainly like to throw your money around. What are you, a bootlegger? No, I'm a reporter, and a good one, too. How nice. Just the same, I think I'll walk. Oh, all right. Maybe a walk would do us good. But I didn't invite you. Oh, oh no, that's all right. I got nothing to do until 10 o'clock. These records are kind of heavy. Yes, they must be. Well, thank you very much. Goodbye. Well, what's the matter? Nothing. I live here, that's all. Oh, oh. Well, good night. Good night. Oh, oh wait, wait a minute. Do you mind if I ask you a personal question? I guess not. Have you got a phonograph inside? Yes, why? Well, would you let me hear this record? Otherwise, I'll have to take it home and imagine how it sounds. Haven't you got a machine at home? No. Then why on earth did you buy 27... Oh. <laughs> Silly, wasn't it? <laughs> oh, yeah. Every time I've heard that song since, I've thought of that day. There was another one in that bunch of records, too. This one. They were playing it one night in a little Chinese restaurant down near the beach. We had stopped off there for dinner on our way home. Roger was very quiet. We sat there for the longest time, never saying a What are you thinking about? Oh, just wishing, wishing we could always be together like this. I mean, I wish every day were a holiday like today. Never have to go home, never have to go to work. Mm, it would be perfect, wouldn't it? <laughs> What's that you've got? A rice cake. It's got my fortune inside. <laughs> oh. What does it say? Oh, nothing. It's silly. Oh, come on, let's see it. <laughs> All right. It says, a oh, baby. <laughs> uh, these things are a lot of bunk. They never come true. You don't like kids very much, do you? Yeah, I like them all right, except when they're pests. What does your fortune say? Eh, nothing. Here, read it. You will be an old bachelor. Oh, very unromantic. <laughs> I told you they never come true. <laughs> we played this one at my New Year's Eve party. I guess I'd known Roger about four months. You remember that New Year's Eve Applejack? You came to my place, but... <laughs> You weren't very happy about it. Look, I, I, don't, I don't belong here. Of course you belong here, Applejack. I invited you, didn't I? Hey, uh, where's Roger? He's not here yet. I thought maybe you'd know. Uh, not me. You're pretty crazy about that reporter, aren't you? Oh, I'm fond of him. That's bad. I hate seeing a nice girl like you get mixed up with a newspaper man. I never knew one worth a darn when it came to a woman. Oh, he's a lot of 
fun to go out with, that's all. You're always running down a story, hanging around a speakeasy, waiting for the proof to come up. At least that's what they say they're doing. But you never know what they're up to. Of course, for a single man, it's swell. But a married man... Applejack, it's... listen, don't worry about me. I don't need any advice. I never even thought of getting married. No fooling? No fooling. Well, that's fine. Uh, Jody. Here he is now. Hello. Hey, I've got to talk to you right away. Where can we be alone? Why alone? I'm having fun. Come on. We'll go out on the fire escape. But, Roger, I'll freeze. Now, Julie, dear, don't be angry. I'd have been here sooner, only a lot's happened. Nice time to come to a party. It's almost 12. I, I know, darling. I'm sorry, but I've had a million things to do. Honey, look, I've had a real break. Flynn quit his job over in China. Imagine what a spot that leaves the paper in. One man in the Orient, and he walks out on the oh, job. Roger, you're going to take his place? Well, that's what they want me to do. I've got a ticket in my pocket for a train that leaves at 3 a.m. I'll get to San Francisco just in time to catch the next boat. I can't believe it, Julie. Imagine them picking me. Oh, but you're able, Roger. You have ability. Anyone can see that. You're going? Oh, that's what I wanted to talk to you about. It's a fine salary, two-year contract, and more or less my own boss, and, well, I, I was wondering... Now, listen, little boy. Of course I want you to go if that's what's worrying you. Please don't think that oh, I... Oh, I wasn't worrying about that. No, what I hurried over here to tell you was, uh... Julie, let's get married. Let's get married tonight, right away. I can send for you in three months. I'll have the money then. Three months? Well, why the rush to get married now? Well, because... What do you think I want to leave a girl like you running around loose? Suppose somebody else came along. Oh, Julie, I've got to have you. Oh, Roger, darling. Julie, is it till death do us part? Till death do us part. Listen, it's New Year. Julie, I've got everything all set. All you have to do is to sign the marriage license. Come on. much time. It's all right, darling. Porter, which is my compartment? Uh, compartment G, sir. How much time before the train leaves? Oh, just about two minutes, sir. Thank you. Go on in, dear. Well, Mrs. Adams. Mrs. Adams. <laughs> sounds strange, doesn't it? No, not strange, darling. It sounds great. Mm, it does sound great. You know, there's, uh, there's something about a train. I, I don't know what it is, the way it looks or smells, but it's... It always makes me want to be off somewhere. Yeah, I know. I feel the same way. Oh, Roger, I, I wish this was our honeymoon. So do I, dear. Oh, darling, I, I can't say goodbye to you. Well, it isn't really goodbye. It won't, won't be for long. It's just, uh, I'll see you later. Mm, that's it. I'll see you later. But never say goodbye. Yes, dear. Oh, and promise me something, honey. Promise me never to take your ring off. I won't take it off. No matter what happens. Thank you, darling. Roger. Oh, Roger, the train's moving. All right, all right. Don't, don't, don't worry, dear. I'll, I'll get you off the next stop. How far is the next stop, Roger? About three hours. Roger went on to China, and I waited for him to send for me. I didn't have to wait long. Four months later, I was with him. <laughs> he had a great big house, four Chinese servants, four. Oh, Roger was living like a prince. Well, darling, what do you think of your new home? Roger, I didn't expect anything like this. <laughs> it doesn't seem real. <laughs> Are you sure we can afford all this? Oh, now, don't be so practical when I'm romantic. Nothing's too good for my little wife. Are we going to keep it? I mean, stay here right along? Well, certainly, it's yours. I bought the lease from an American who went back. Furniture, four servants, three kids, everything. Kids? Whose? <laughs> servants, they live here. I thought you didn't like children. Who, me? Ah, no, they're all right. Anyway, I got the whole shebang for $1,000 American. But how in the world did you do it? Get the money to send for me and buy all this, too. I got an advance. An advance? Sure, an advance on my salary. Everybody does that out here. That's how you operate. Oh, Roger. Oh, now you're not going to be one of those wives always worrying about money and budgets, are you? No, but I sort of hate to start off in debt, especially now. What do you mean now? Roger, remember this? What? Oh, the, the fortune. Sure, you got it at the beach. <laughs> Imagine you keeping that. You were wrong, darling. Sometimes those things come true. <laughs> sure they do, certainly. Well, let's see it. Uh, baby. <laughs> Say, if I ever... 
Hey, 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 wait a minute. Roger. I... Oh, Ju Julie, why didn't you tell me? Why, why didn't you write me? But you don't like well, me. Well, of course I do. Why would I have three of them running around here? And, and this one will be ours. And, an American kid. Oh, Julie, this is great. Roger, I'm so glad you want us. We went north after that. Roger had an assignment away from the city, and I went up with him. Roger began to talk about traveling all our lives, never settling down. Well, we were there about three weeks when, when it happened. I can still hear the sound in my ears. At first, it was just a sort of rumbling. And then it grew louder and louder. The floor began to shake. I can hear the crowd outside screaming. I saw the pictures dancing on the wall. I saw myself falling. We came home on the next boat, back to San Francisco. I think I knew then that I would never have my baby. And in the hospital, a few weeks after, the doctor told me. Well, that's all, Mrs. Adams. Otherwise, you'll enjoy the best of health. Now I've got some good news for you. I'm letting your husband see you today. Oh, come in, Mr. Adams. Hello, darling. Hello, Roger. Oh, gee, I'm, I'm so glad to see you. You're doing very well. You'll be able to take her home soon. Thank you. Oh, darling, I've been miserable without you. But I, I've had a chance to do a lot of serious thinking. I've been out scouting around the nearby towns looking for that, that little paper I once talked about buying. No more silly ideas like traveling around. You're absolutely right about that. And I, I, I think I found it, too, honey. A little place just north of here. A place called Rosalia. Ever hear of it? Uh, uh, no, no. And... Best of all, honey, we'll have a home of our own. One that'll always be ours. If I get the paper going good, I can get you everything. Furniture, car, clothes, everything. You know, it's strange, Roger. But I can't get myself to care about those things now. They don't seem important anymore. What I want, I can't have. The one thing I've ever really wanted. I'm never going to have. In just a moment, Mr. DeMille will bring our stars, Barbara Stanwyck, Robert Taylor, Beulah Bondi, and Edgar Buchanan, back to the microphone for Act Two of Penny Serenade. Now, here's more news about the Lux Flakes Garden Club. Yes, more news about our wonderful flower bargain. Three first-quality chrysanthemum plants. A whole dollar's worth, which you can have for only ten cents in the opening tab from a large size box of Lux Flakes. If you haven't sent for yours yet, well, you'd better mail your order in right away. Tonight, or first thing tomorrow. Single and double chrysanthemums, pom-pom, and button types, all are included in our offer. In rich shades of crimson, yellow, golden bronze, and pure white. One in each set of three blooms in a pure, glowing shell pink. And every one of these Lux chrysanthemum plants has been treated with transplantone, a vitamin product, to strengthen the roots and produce more vivid colors, earlier flowering, and more perfect blossom. All through the early fall, just when other flowers are through blooming, these beautiful mums will brighten your garden with color, giving you dozens of flowers from each plant. Mums are easy to grow, you know. Even in a city apartment, they'll thrive in flower pots or sunny window boxes so you can have fresh-cut flowers at a cost of next to nothing. Order as many sets of three chrysanthemum plants as you want, but do it now so you won't be disappointed. Your dealer has order blanks for you to use, or write your name on a piece of paper, and mail it with ten cents in coin, no stamps, please, and the opening tab from a large size box of Lux Flakes to Lux Garden Club, Hollywood, California. Please allow at least two weeks for your plants to reach you. With them, we'll send a leaflet giving planting directions, and another telling you how you can get more flower bargains. Remember, for each set of three plants you order, send 10 cents in coin and the opening tab from a large size box of Lux Flakes to Lux Garden Club, Hollywood, California. Be sure to include your name and address. This offer is good only in the United States. Now, 
Our producer, Mr. DeMille. Act two of Penny Serenade. Starring Robert Taylor as Roger and Barbara Stanwyck as Julie. With Beulah Bondi as Miss Oliver and Edgar Buchanan as Applejack. An album of old phonograph records. An album of memories. To Julie Adams, each record is a chapter in her life, bringing back the heartaches and the happiness, the sorrow and the joy of years gone by. Remember this one, Applejack? Huh? It was popular just about the time you came to help Roger with the newspaper. It was fun in those days, wasn't it? The linotype machine running downstairs smell of printer's ink in the house. But there was something missing even then. You knew what it was, Applejack. You mentioned it one night at dinner. Roger's out running down subscriptions, said he might not be home till late. Well, sit down, Applejack. We might as well have our dinner. Yes, Miss Jean. You know, Miss Julie, I think we ought to have a kid around this house. I thought you knew, Applejack. Oh, oh, sure, I know about that, huh? I'm talking about adopting one. You get some pretty good ones that way. I'm an adopted kid myself. Of course, I know that ain't much of a recommendation. I didn't turn out so bad. Want some bread, Applejack? Miss Julie, I wish you could have seen some of those little sons of guns. They was the cutest little rascals you ever want to look at. I don't think Roger would want a child that way, Applejack. One that wasn't his own. Well, why not? Now, he's no sucker. He don't want to gamble. How do you know what they're going to be like when they've got to be your own? This way you, you walk in and help yourself to exactly what you want. There's no guesswork. I've thought about that a lot, Applejack. I want one. But Roger was so disappointed when I... Oh, I just haven't had the courage to suggest it. Miss Julie, do you want to know something? He's all for the idea. Well, only a few days ago we were working together and... I was talking to him. You were talking said, to him about this? Sure, and he was all for it. Why didn't he say something to me? Uh, well, he was afraid to say anything to you. He afraid you might have some fool notions. Fool notions? What a very idea. My own husband talking about things like this with, with the printer. Press manager, please. All right, press manager. Are you going to be the mother? No, uh, no, I just thought... Fine I... thing. Hello? Roger, come here. On a fight. Hey, Roger, I want you to look at that new ad. Would you come on downstairs? Wait a minute. Roger, why didn't you tell me? Hmm? Tell you what? What you and Applejack have been talking about. Miss Julie, I told you in confidence. Well, what were we talking about? Applejack, what did you say to her? The, uh, well, you know about He the... told me. I told you what? Roger, if you wanted to adopt a baby, why didn't you talk to me? What? Sure, you should have told her in the first place, not me. I'm not going to be the mother. Now, wait a minute. Did, did you tell Julie I wanted to adopt a baby? Well, I hinted at it. I, I tried to break it to her gently, and she... Oh, you told her, huh? Yeah. Oh, Roger, I'm so glad you feel that way. Yeah, she wants it even more than you, Roger. Well, that's the way we all feel about it. Yeah, I like it, too. I suppose it's settled, huh? Oh, Roger, I'm so glad. If it hadn't been for Applejack letting it slip out, I don't suppose I ever would have known. Sit down, Roger, and I'll get you your dinner. Well, I guess I'd better go fix that press. Yeah, you fix everything else, don't you? What's the idea of telling her a thing like that? I never said I wanted a baby. Well, I... Oh, shut up. Hurry, Roger, hurry. The lady said three o'clock. Yeah, look, Julie, while I think of it, now, when we get to this place, don't get all enthusiastic right off the bat. You know, don't, don't just rush in and grab the first kid you see and go nuts about it. What makes you think I'll grab the first one they show me? I've been doing the shopping in this family for some time now, and I, I just don't bring home anything. Well, you came home with this tie, didn't you? Well, it's nice. Everybody's wearing bow ties. Yeah, yeah. Sit down, Mrs. Adams. I have your letter here. You want a two-year-old child, blue eyes, curly hair, dimpled chin... Sweet disposition. We prefer a boy. But we'd like to look at the girls, too. Now, Julie, you know we agreed on a boy. But it won't hurt to look, will it? Well, all right, we'll look. Now, what can you show us, please? This is the administration building. We don't have any children here. Oh. oh. Everybody wants blue eyes, curly hair, dimples. Everybody wants a two-year-old child. Now, will you tell me why? Well, you see, in, uh, in our case, 
That would have been the age of our own child if... Oh, I see. Anyway, when they're two years old, they're more or less housebroken then, aren't they? Well, not always. At the moment, we haven't any children available at all. There's a long waiting list. If you get one within a year, you're lucky. What? Within a year? You mean we might have to wait a whole year? Well, after all, real parents wait almost a year. Yes, certainly, but... But you see, Miss Oliver, we've... We've waited so long already. I know, my dear, but you're both very young. Then, too, we have to have time to make our investigation. Investigation? Yes, you see, we're just as particular about you as prospective parents as you are about the child. Oh. Naturally. Yeah, yeah. What is your business, Mr. Adams? Oh, I'm a, I'm a publisher. I run the Rosalia Courier. Publisher. That's right. I see in your letter that uh, you live in the country... I presume that that means, then, that you have a house and yard. Well, you see... Uh, no, uh, we don't have a yard. We live in an apartment over the newspaper office. But you have a separate room for the child, haven't you? Oh, sure. Oh, sure. yes, we have a lovely room. It's practically fixed up now. Well, that's fine. Now, about income. Approximately, how much do you make a week? Well, uh, I, I, I couldn't tell you just offhand. I, I imagine about a hundred dollars a week. Of course, I'd have to look at the books. Well, that's excellent. Now, if you'll just take that application home with you and mail it to us so that we'll have all the details, then in due time, one of our investigators will call on you. Oh, fine. You'll call us before she comes, won't you? No, we just drop in. That's our policy. You see, we want to find your house as it really is every day and not when it's fixed up for company. Oh, I see. Goodbye. Bye, Miss Oliver. Goodbye. Oh, uh, Miss Oliver, it, uh, it doesn't matter if he hasn't got curly hair doesn't really matter. Very well, Mrs. Adams. Goodbye. Goodbye. Oh, Roger. Hey, they're darn choosy if you ask Roger, me. Roger, why do you have to be a big shot? What do you mean? You know we don't make $100 a week. Well, you want the baby, don't you? Anyway, they can't prove it. We don't keep books. <laughs> The day that Miss Oliver came to investigate us, I was cleaning house. I had on an old dress and my hair was a sight. Just to make things a little worse, I had the phonograph going full blast. Good afternoon. Does Mrs. Adams live here? Yes, upstairs. I'll call her. No, don't bother. I'm Miss Oliver from the orphanage. I'll find her. Oh, oh. Well, I don't think she's home just now. I... I, th I think she's in church. In church? This time of day? Well, uh, you see, she and Mr. Adams go there quite a lot. They just go there and sit. Fine people, the Adams. Well, I'm sure she won't mind if I just look around a bit. No, no, she won't mind. Miss Oliver. Oh. How are you, Mrs. Adams? Oh, I'm sorry, I... Uh, oh, it's all right. You've, uh, you've come to see the apartment. That's right. Well, this is it. It's not very neat at the moment. We're cleaning. I see. Hey, Julie, where oh. in the place did you put my pants? Oh, Roger. I have to go around in a bathrobe all day just because oh, you... Hello, oh, Mr. Adams. Oh, oh, oh well, uh, hello, Miss Oliver. We weren't expecting you. Mr. Adams was working late last night getting out the paper. <laughs> I understand. Well, I think I have a surprise for you, Mr. Adams. A baby came in yesterday. No. Miss Oliver, you mean that... Well, here, here come, and, come and sit down. Thank you. That's the reason we came around to see you sooner than we expected. It's a little girl. Oh, well, uh, we don't want a girl. Five weeks and three days old. Five weeks? Well, we did speak of an older child, you know. Well, sure, two years. You might have to wait a long time. After all, aren't you making too great a point out of the child's age, Mr. Adams? Eventually, this child will be two years old. Yeah, but we don't know anything about such little babies. Well, no one does until they have them. And this is such an unusual little baby. Actually, there's another couple who has first choice. But somehow, I feel she's exactly the child for you. That's why I wanted you to see her first. And I, well, I couldn't resist giving you the chance. Did you bring her with you? Oh, no, she's in the nursery. You and Mr. Adams will have to come over to the city to see her. What is she like, Miss Oliver? Well, I can't describe her exactly, but she's... Well, she's like no other child. Like, 
no other child. Yeah, she isn't a boy. Oh, Roger, there's no harm in looking at her. If you don't like her, I won't say a word. What's the use, Julie? We don't want oh, her. please, darling, it won't hurt to look at her. Well, all right, we'll look, Miss Oliver. Well, that's fine. Oh, look at her, Roger. She's holding your finger. Yeah, that's quite a grip, hasn't she? <laughs> For a girl, I mean. Would you like to hold her, Mrs. Adams? Would I? Thank you. Oh, Oh, Roger, she's sweet. Oh, look. Yeah, quite a kid. Well, you've had your look, dear. How about going back home? Home? You don't mean... Oh, Roger. Huh? Uh, oh, well, all right. She's yours, I oh, guess. darling. When do we get her? Now, if you like. She's yours on a year's probation. Now? You mean we, we can just walk out of here with her like this? It sometimes happens that way. Well, uh... But we have no clothes for her. We don't know how to feed her. She's an awful little baby. Morgan will take care of everything. She'll give you the formula and so forth. Well, thank you, Miss Oliver, for being so kind. Oh, don't thank me. It just happens so. Perhaps before you make up your mind fully to take the child, you'd like to have me go into her history. I can assure you it's an excellent one. Oh, no, that's, that's okay. We'll take a chance on her. Chairs around the bed. Look out, you're in the way. Shh, don't make so much noise. She wakes up again, you know what that means. Yeah, that'll do. You think she'll be all right in here? Oh, sure, it'll be okay. She? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, come on, let's go to bed. Oh, I don't know. I don't think I'll go to bed. She eats again in a half hour. The directions say so. Well, I'll set the alarm. Come on. Oh, no. Maybe I'd just better sit here and watch her. Oh, now, don't be silly. Well, she might wake up. It won't wake up. Oh, Roger! What in the... Turn it off! Turn it off! Well, I, I'm not trying Quick. to. It's, it's stuck. I can't move the thing. It's... Oh. oh, Roger. Well, I couldn't help it. Look at the baby. Is it awake? No. No? Well, what's the matter with it? Well, I don't know. You think she's all right? Well, I don't know. Is it is it breathing? Oh, oh yes. Yes, she's all right. Oh, well, come on. She's certainly a good little baby, isn't she? <laughs> we were lucky to get her. Well, let's go to bed. Be quiet, closing the door. Oh, don't worry. Go ahead. Roger! What's the matter? What's the matter? Oh, Roger! Oh, dear, do something! Do something! What do I do? Well, do something. Can't you see the baby suffering? I don't know what to do. Well, don't just stand there. Do something. Well, you take her. Pick her up. Huh? Oh, go on. You do something. Oh, no, never mind. I'm going to get Miss Oliver. Well, you can't call her at this hour. I'll pick her up. Uh, come on, baby. Come. Hey, look, it's it shut up. Oh, Oh, darling. Yeah, just wanted their daddy, that's all. Yeah. <laughs> ugly, 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 ugly. Yeah, just wanted their daddy. <laughs> that first year passed so quickly, it seemed like a few short weeks. Roger was happier than I'd ever seen him. Even the trouble he was having with the paper didn't seem to matter. He had dreams. Up he goes. Down she goes. <laughs> hey, Julie, look, she's trying to dance. Yes. <laughs> That's a girl. Go ahead. She's go got on. your smile, Roger. Why, sure, she's good looking. <laughs> Are you still sorry she wasn't a boy? Uh huh. A boy? What do you mean a boy? Don't let her hear you say that. You wanted a boy. I didn't want a boy. <laughs> oh. oh, hello, Miss Oliver. Roger, turn that off. How do you do, Mrs. Adams? Sit down, Miss Oliver. Thank you so much for letting us know you are coming this time. Hello, Miss Oliver. Trina, this is your fairy godmother, Miss Oliver. Say hello, sweetheart. Yeah. She's not very timid, is she? <laughs> I can see plainly that she adores her father. Oh, she means everything to us. When are we going to get to own her outright, Miss Oliver? You go before the judge the 27th. The 27th, huh? Fine. Now, these are the same questions that you answered last year. You just want to bring them up to date. Let's see, uh... Religion, same. Age, oh, one year older. <laughs> I have that. Profession, still publisher, isn't it? Yes. Income, income. Well, uh, you see, Miss Oliver. None. Uh... None. I don't understand. Well, that's uh, that's the way it is in the newspaper game, Miss Oliver. You you have to close down once before you really get going. 
Oh, it, it's, it's only temporary. I'll have it humming by the 27th. I'm sure you'll find a way, Mr. Adams, but you and I have to prove to the judge that your income is enough to take care of Trina. Oh, you know we'd give Trina everything she needed, Miss Oliver, no matter who else had to suffer around here. I realize that. Well, I must go now. That's all we can do today. Goodbye, Miss Oliver. Goodbye. Mr. Adams, you'll bring the baby when you come before the judge. The 27th. We'll be there. There she is already, dear. Roger. Don't forget to take her coat off in the train. I won't. And you'll call me. You'll let me know what the judge says right away? As soon as I can. Goodbye, dear. Bye. Come on, Trina. Roger, wait. Her, uh, her, her bunny, she, she may want it. Here, darling, take your bunny with you. Goodbye, dear. Goodbye, Trina. Mr. Adams, in looking over these adoption papers here, I see that you have no income at present. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. What is this, Miss Oliver? You know this case should never have come before me. Well, Your Honor, I feel that this is a special case. I've kept hoping until the last minute that Mr. Adams might be able to resume the operation of his paper. But unfortunately... Under these conditions, I can't grant the adoption. This child will have to revert to the orphanage. Mr. Adams, will you draw up a chair, please, while I prepare these release papers for you to sign? Just a matter of routine. Please, Your Honor, it can't be just a matter of routine for people to have their baby taken away from them. Those are the requirements of the law. Yes, but you see, we've we've had her since she was six weeks old, and it just doesn't seem reasonable that we should have to give her back now to, to, to strangers. Mr. Adams, you're not here to plead your case. You've had the regular opportunity to prove your fitness to provide. But we are fit, Judge. I'm sorry. Without any income, I have no alternative. Look, Your Honor, she's... She's not like an automobile or an icebox or a piece of furniture or something you buy on time, and, and then when you can't keep up the payments, they come and take it away from you. Now, Trina, sit still and be a good girl. Well, anyone can give up those things, but I ask you, Judge, how can you give up your own child? And she, she is our child, just as much as if she'd been born to us. Look, Judge, we've we've had her over a year now. Why, we've... We've walked the floor with her when she had the colic. We've lost nights of sleep worrying every time she cut a tooth. We've gone through everything. Everything that real parents have with one of their own. And you sit there and say it's a matter of routine for you to take her away from us. Please, Mr. Adams. Uh, sorry, Judge, but... Well, you see, we, we weren't as fortunate as most people. We'd have had one of our own, only... Well... You don't know how badly my wife wanted a child. It wasn't so important to me. I don't know. I suppose most men are like this, but children never meant a great deal to me. Oh, I, I liked them all right, I suppose, but... Well, what I'm trying to say is... Your Honor, the, the first time I saw her, she she looked so little and helpless. And when she, she took hold of my finger and held on to it, she... She... Just sort of walked into my heart, Judge, and she was there to stay. I, I didn't know I could feel like that. I'd always been kind of careless and irresponsible. I wanted to be a big shot. I had to be my own boss, that sort of thing. Now here I am standing in front of a judge, pleading for just a little longer so that I can prove to you I can support a little child that doesn't weigh quite 20 pounds. It's not only for my wife and me that I'm asking. For Trina's sake, too, she, she doesn't know any parents but us. She wouldn't know what had happened to her. So, so many little things about her, and nobody would understand the way Julie and I do. We love her, Judge. Please don't take her away from us. Look, I, I'm not a big shot now, but I'll do anything. I'll work for anybody. I'll beg. I'll borrow. I'll... Oh, please, Judge, I'll, I'll sell anything I've got until I get going again. Only she'll never go hungry and she'll never be without clothes. Not as long as I've got two good hands to help me. Julie. Roger. Roger, you're... 
brought her back. She's yours, dear. Ours. The judge said so. Ours, now, and forever. Oh, Trina. Oh, Trina. Nothing can ever take her from us now. Nothing. Station identification. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System. We'll hear Act Three of Penny Serenade, starring Barbara Stanwyck, Robert Taylor, Beulah Bondi, and Edgar Buchanan, in just a moment. But now, here's a tune I wonder if you remember. Do you recognize it? It's called Little White Lies. Most of us tell them once in a while, Little White Lies, that are really not lies at all, but out of kindness we avoid telling the whole story. Like this, for instance. Say, Mary, did, um, did your brother get his leave all right? Why, Jane, we, we don't know yet for sure. He'll call you if he does. But the truth of the matter is... We're rather expecting Bill home tonight. And Jane is one girl I'm afraid he won't call. It is too bad she's left out of things. It's her own fault, though. I suppose I ought to say something. But probably Mary won't tell Jane what's wrong, and... She'll miss out on good times and dates and maybe romance. That's the trouble when a girl takes chances with daintiness. Unless we're sure everything we wear is truly fresh, we may offend other people. And it's foolish to risk offending nowadays. New Quick Lux Flakes make it so easy to have fresh underthings to put on every day. So easy to keep blouses and sweaters and dresses dainty, too. These gentle suds float away perspiration so fast. And here's something to think about. When you lux underthings every day, you actually help them to wear longer. That's important these days, isn't it? You see, perspiration does a lot of damage to fabrics. So getting rid of it promptly prolongs their life. Naturally, you shouldn't risk cake soap rubbing or strong soaps because they're apt to be hard on colors and fibers. Lux is so gentle, it's safe for anything safe in plain water. So for daintiness and thrift, be sure to use Lux every single day. Now, Mr. DeMille returns to the microphone. The curtain rises on the third act of Penny Serenade, starring Barbara Stanwyck and Robert Taylor, with Beulah Bondi and Edgar Buchanan. apartment over the newspaper office, Julie Adams plays her album of old records, the story of a happy marriage. She's almost at the end of the album now. As Applejack watches silently, Julie places another record on the turntable. We played this one at Trina's fifth birthday. Remember Applejack? You bought it for her. Did I? We played it again last year. On my birthday. <laughs> that was quite a night, wasn't it? I, I was really surprised. Happy birthday, darling. Oh, for heaven's sake. Happy birthday, Mommy. Oh, thank you, darling. Come on, sit down. Trina's going to make a presentation. I'd almost forgotten today was my birthday. Here, Mommy. This is from Daddy. From Daddy? Uh-huh. Oh, Roger, a wristwatch. Oh, darling, I've always wanted one like that. And this is from Uncle Applejack? Uncle Applejack. Oh, I think I know what that is. It's handkerchief. Oh. Oh, it's beautiful, Applejack. Yeah, I always figure a person can't have too many handkerchiefs. I better tend to the crazy. And this is from me. From you? Well, I can't imagine what this is. What on earth is... I got you a record because you love records. And because you and Daddy love each other so much. Come on, play it. Oh, Trina, you're sweet, darling. Thank you. I'll turn on the phonograph. Put the record on, Mommy. Trina picked it out herself. Did she? Mm -hmm. Nice. Dance? Mrs. Adams? Dance? I'd love to. You dance nice, Mommy. <laughs> Thank you, dear. 
Dinner's ready. Come and get it or I'll throw it in the crate. Oh, this is wonderful. Dinner in my own home and I didn't have to cook. Well, we sure changed the complexion of that bird. We certainly did. <laughs> what did you do in school today, darling? Oh, I almost forgot. I was choose. I'm going to be in the Christmas play. In the Christmas play? What are you going to do? I'm going to sing in the carol. Hey, that's all right. Why, Trina, that's wonderful. Oh, it'll be fun making you a carolist costume. But I don't need any costume. Nobody sees me. Nobody sees you? No. All I have to wear is, um, a clean dress and some sneakers. I'm the Echo, and I'm away off behind the scenes. You only hear my voice. Miss Hopkins says it gives a far away sound, like the angels in heaven. Oh. Well, why do you have to wear the sneakers? The sneakers is so I'll be quiet. I have to walk up a ladder behind the scenes and take a big star with me. Then when I get over the manger, I stop, and then the angels sing. And when my turn comes, I sing the Echo. Then I sneak off quietly. Next year, when I'm big, I'll get to be an angel and wear an angel suit. I'll get seen, man. Of course you'll get seen then, darling. Is it a long time until next year, Daddy? Oh, no, darling. It'll be here in no time at all. I don't see Trina yet. You can't see her. But I don't even see the star. Do you suppose anything's happened? Oh, what could happen? She said she had to climb a ladder. I... Look, look, there's the star. Oh. Oh, Roger, she's doing very well, isn't she? <gasps> Roger! She fell off the ladder! Yes, she will, darling. Yes, certainly she Well, will. I was talking to her, and she said you did fine, Trina. She did? Sure. Why, why, you were better than all the rest of them put together. See, dear? Honest? Honest. Gee, I don't know what people would do without Christmas. I don't know what we'd do without you, honey. Oh. Uh. All this past year, Trina was looking forward to this Christmas. She wanted Miss Oliver to come and, and see her in the play. I... I wrote to Miss Oliver. Yes, Oliver. Oliver. I should have written you sooner, but I could not. Less than three weeks ago, Trina was here, looking to Roger and me for food and clothing and shelter with the helplessness of the very young. Now, she does not need us. A sudden, brief, hopeless illness. And she was gone. Quickly, quickly. The day so long ago when she became ours, he said, nothing can ever take her away from us. But we had forgotten about death. With that light step of hers, she has outdistanced us. Roger, Roger, why don't you speak to me? Roger, don't you hear me? Yeah. I'm going out for a while. I wish you wouldn't. I've got to get out of here, get some fresh air. There's someone at the door. I'll answer. Oh, may I use your phone, please? Our car is stalled in the snow, and I'd like to call a taxi. Yes, the phone's right there. Come in. Thank you. Come in, Tommy. Thank you. Is this your little boy? Yes. Say hello, Tommy. Hello. We're in such a hurry, and I saw your light burning. Oh, dear, the line's busy. I guess cabs work overtime on a night like this. But I do hope we can get one. Tommy's in the Christmas play. I hope we don't get late, Mommy. Our, uh... Our car is right out front. I'll drive you over if you like. 
Oh, that's very kind of you. If it wouldn't be too much trouble. No, it's not much trouble. I'll get my coat. Can't start the car. Oh. Battery's dead. I'll have to crank it. This is the nearest I can get. Oh, thank you. This is fine. You can go in the side door. Yes, I know. Mommy, there's things already. We're late. Good night, and thank you again. If you only knew what these things mean to a child. Good night. What's the matter, Roger? Take the car on home. What about you? I'm not coming home. I don't ever want to see anything or anyone that reminds me. All right. Goodbye. That's the last of the apples, yes. Those old songs really take you back, don't they? Yes, they take you back. Did you decide which ones you're going to keep and which ones you're going to leave for him? Funny, Applejack, I can't seem to divide them. They, they belong to both of us. I guess I'll just leave them. Julie. Applejack, will you get the rest of my things out of the bedroom for me, please? Sure. You uh, leaving, Julie? Yes, Roger. Well, I don't blame you. I don't blame you at all. You should leave me. I haven't done any of the big things I planned to do for you. Right where we started, still struggling. Let you down all around, honey. All I needed to make it 100% was for you to leave me. I can't think of a reason in the world for you not to. I'm licked, Julie. You're not licked, Roger. It's just us. We're licked as far as our being together is concerned. When something really came along that hit us hard enough, we couldn't face it together. I've needed you an awful lot these last few days. You've been miles away. I've been entirely alone right here in this room with you. I know, dear. It just didn't work out. Oh, it did work out, Julie. Things were wonderful until this happened to us. I don't know. I, I just haven't been able to think straight the last few days. She was never sick before, and then all of a sudden it was over. There's only some way that people could know a few days ahead what was going to happen. Yeah. The day before she was taken sick, she, she asked me for a quarter, and I, I wouldn't let her have it. Then she asked me to take her to the movies, and I said, no, run along, I'm too busy. I know. It was the same with me. I was trying on her angel costume. She was so excited, she couldn't stand still. I scolded her. I said, I'll never try another dress on you again. And I never did. Hello? Oh, it's uh, Miss Oliver. She wants to speak to you. To me? Hello? Hello, Mrs. Adams. Yes, Miss Oliver. It's a very strange thing, Mrs. Adams, but we have a little boy who is just two years old. But it's the oddest thing. He's the exact image of the youngster you asked for when you first wrote me. Do you remember? Oh, yes. Uh, Roger, listen. Well, I have that old letter here in front of me now. Curly hair, blue eyes, dimple. Now, this is strictly off the record, for really, another couple has the right to see him first. But he's such a remarkable baby that I thought perhaps you and Mr. Adams might want to take a look. Oh, yes. Yes, we do, Miss Oliver. We'll come down and see you tomorrow, if that's all right. Oh, oh and Miss Oliver... Please don't let that other couple see him until we do, will you? I won't, my dear. Goodbye. Goodbye. Well, if, if he's only two years old, I'd, I'd better put up that gate around the stairs again. Yes. Wouldn't want the little fellow falling downstairs and breaking his arm. Oh, and I... I guess we'd better get out the crib. Oh, but if he's two years old, he can sleep in the bed, can't he? Sure, sure. <laughs> We won't have to put the chairs around again, Roger. Oh, and then and, and over in that corner, I, I can put a little electric train. Yeah, and, yeah. And maybe there'd be room in the other corner.
Our stars will be back for a curtain call in just a moment. No matter how you look at it, there's a certain amount of work attached to keeping house. But how you look at it makes a big difference. Take washing dishes, for example. Some people think it's a terrible chore. Yes, they're the ones who make it even tougher for themselves by using strong wash day soaps that roughen and redden their hands till they look like Cinderella, the little kitchen drudge. But then there are other people who breeze through the dishes. Breeze through the dishes with a smile and a box of Lux Flakes and end up with hands that are still as smooth and soft as though they'd never washed a dish in their lives. Scores of careful tests have proved that simply changing from strong soap to Lux will make rough red dishpan hands grow softer, smoother, and lovelier again without the use of any creams or lotions. In these tests, there was noticeable improvement in from two to seven days. So if you've let your hands get that ugly dishpan look, Buy the thrifty big box of new quick Lux Flakes first thing tomorrow morning and start using it for your dishes. As you watch your hands grow lovelier again, you'll find a big change in your whole attitude toward that daily job of washing dishes. You'll join the millions of women who... Now, here's Mr. DeMille with our stars. We can't have Barbara Stanwyck and Robert Taylor here every week, though I almost wish we could. But we'll hold them a few moments longer now for a curtain call. Thank you, C.B. It's always a pleasure to be here. And uh, tonight, of course, you have my favorite leading lady. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, that, was, uh, that was more or less intentional on our part, Bob. <laughs> Incidentally, Barbara, I've heard some rather surprising news at Paramount about your picture, The Great Man's Lady. Better let me know the worst right away, C.B. Well, they tell me you play the part of a woman 107 years old. Old enough to be your grandmother, huh, C.B.? <laughs> I'm afraid it's true, but only during part of the picture. The rest of the time, I'm somewhat younger. Uh -huh. Say, I rather like that idea of yours, Bob. Hmm? What idea is that? Being old enough to be Mr. DeMille's grandmother. <laughs> Believe me, I'd make little Cecil toe the line. <laughs> <laughs> I'll toe the line for you just as you are, Barbara. That's very nice, C.B., now, what play do you have next week? Hmm. Changing the subject, eh? Well, next week, next Monday night, we're going to present our adaptation of RKO's Suspicion. And our stars will be Joan Fontaine and Brian Ahern. You'll hear Joan Fontaine repeat the performance that won her an Academy Award in this drama of suspense and mystery. Suspicion is one of the most exciting pictures of the year. So get ready to have your pulse go up a few beats next Monday night. Well, you've got a full order of thrills and suspicion, C.B. I'll be listening. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Penny Serenade with a million-dollar tune. Ladies and gentlemen, you have received many appeals for money in the past few months. You will receive many more. But none with a better claim on your generosity than the Navy Relief Society. The men of the United States Navy are giving their lives for their country every day. The least we can do is to help take care of the loved ones they leave behind. Make a contribution today to the cause of freedom by giving to the Navy Relief Society. Our sponsors, the makers of Lux Flakes, join me in inviting you to be with us again next Monday night when the Lux Radio Theater presents Joan Fontaine and Brian Ahern in Suspicion. This is Cecil B. DeMille saying good night to you from Hollywood. <laughs> Edgar Buchanan appeared through the courtesy of Columbia Pictures and will soon be seen in their picture, The Talk of the Town. Anne Todd appeared through the courtesy of 20th Century Fox Studio. Heard in tonight's play were Griff Barnett, Dwayne Thompson, Bobby Larson, Warren Ash, and Leon Ledoux. Tune in next Monday night to hear Joan Fontaine and Brian Ahern in Suspicion. Our music was directed by Louis Silvers, and your announcer has been Melville Roy. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs>